Hi there and welcome. I'm Savannah and Sean is here as well. And we are the Refuse Management Specialist here at Bush Systems. Thanks everyone for joining and participating in our webinar today. We expect that this webinar will be about half hour or so in length. If you have any questions uh, throughout the webinar, please send us an email. Uh, we will provide our contact information at the end of the webinar today. So today we'll be examining some of the driving forces that make recycling a challenge for business owners and individuals. Why does recycling have to be so confusing? Why are some items accepted at home and not at work? And does recycling even help the environment? These are some of the questions we'll be asking and hopefully educating you on some of the best management practices and solutions. First, let's start off today with some hard hitting facts. Since the 1960s, waste generation in the United States has nearly tripled. In 2012, there was an estimated 251 million pounds of discarded materials. This equates to about 4.4 pounds of materials per person per day for the entirety of the United States. And of that 251 million pounds, only 35% found its way to a recycling center or composting facility. While efforts are being made to increase the recycling rates and reduce waste, many of the strategies and initiatives are falling on deaf ears as businesses continue to manufacture products with excessive packaging and consumers continue to buy them. Decades ago, recycling was a lot simpler than it is today. People would separate glass bottles, plastic jars, newspapers, and any other kinds of waste, and it was assumed that just because these types of materials were made from recyclables, that they would be. So what we are faced with today is a whole other issue. We are constantly developing new polymers and plastics, new methods of packaging, and developing more and more complex products. The world's products are changing at such a fast rate that it's really difficult for recycling centers to be able to keep up. So with all the economic and environmental benefits associated with recycling, why is it so complicated at the user level? What can we as individuals and businesses do to address some of these issues? How can we make sense of it all, not just for ourselves, but for our families and our customers? Today, we'll be discussing three main challenges in greater detail. First, the lack of standardization across the recycling industry. Second, the associated costs for businesses. And third, a general lack of education and participation when it comes to recycling. We're also going to look at some of the common solutions for each of these problems at both the business and individual level. In order to develop effective solutions, first we must really uh, understand the problem. By far, one of the most complex and complicated issues with recycling is one that affects everyone. One that is so widespread that it leaves people frustrated to the point of throwing everything out in the trash. And this is the issue of lack of standardization. If you're wondering what we mean by lack of standardization, let me ask you a question that I think is gonna clear things up. Where does your municipality request that you dispose of coffee cups? Now, I'm going to guess that most of the viewers that are, that are watching today kind of have a different ideas of where they're supposed to be disposing of these items. It could be in waste, mixed, organics, paper. Maybe you just don't even know. This is because there are practically no two recycling centers alike due to a lack of standardization in collection. Some have technology capable of separating the thin plastic coating from the paper cup, and some don't. Some have incinerators or anaerobic digesters, allowing the cup to be transformed into usable energy while other municipalities have none of the above and dispose of them as waste because they just have no use for them. Now this is just one type of material, one confusing item in one city. What about grocery bags, soiled napkins, greasy pizza boxes, pill bottles, broken glass, ink cartridges, the list goes on. Most of the items I just mentioned are technically made from recycled materials, but where do they go? The amount of variation in accepted materials, even from municipalities in close proximity can be dizzying and it really complicates the issue for us. When cities make decisions about what items to collect, they look into a variety of factors, like is there a purchaser or a market that can use this material? Can we make energy from it through incineration or decomposition? Is it economical for us to separate it, and do we have the technology to do so? So when it comes to a lack of standardization, even from municipalities close in proximity, uh, it's not just the collected materials that are prone to inconsistency inconsistencies, but it's also the education and awareness campaigns and materials. Take a look at some of these bins for recycling and waste disposal. Look at the difference in shapes, sizes, openings, colors, and placements. Everything here is varying. Now take a look at some of the signage options uh, that accompany these containers. Some just use words, some pictures and icons, some are small, some large. 
Whether the materials are collected are the same or not, the freedom of choice for businesses when it comes to the bin sizing, colors, identification, and signage options really leads to a diluted message. It leads to additional confusion in a situation that is already chaotic. Everyone has approached a bin waste in hand and been confused as to what container it goes in. It happens to everyone because of this lack of standardization. Overcoming a lack of standardization is arguably one of the largest waste management issues facing businesses, individuals, and municipalities today. Everyone at all levels is impacted in one way or another. Lack of standardization leads to recycling and waste stream contamination, or simply put, the discarding of materials in the incorrect containers. This ends up costing sorting facilities enormous amounts of money as they need the technology and the manpower to sort through all the unrecyclable materials. Not only this, but the contamination actually degrades the quality of the end material, lowering its resale value, limiting purchaser options, and in some cases, leaving the entire batch of recycled material destined for landfill. With more sorting technology, more manpower, more landfill space needed, coupled with the reduced economic value of recycled materials comes a great, great cost to municipalities, and it's the taxpayers and business owners who will ultimately be caught picking up the tab. So what can we do about this? What can we as individuals and business owners do to press this issue of lack of standardization, to reduce recycling contamination, and to minimize collection expenses and ensure recycling is made simple again? Well, to start, the simplest thing that you can do is to contact your municipality or your hauler to find out what materials are in fact accepted. Many cities even offer a program for free on their website that allows you to type in a certain material like coffee cups, styrofoam, or pizza boxes, and it tells you exactly where to dispose of this material correctly. Knowing this type of information allows you to make better informed decisions, increases your diversion rates, and lowers contamination. Pass on this information to your family and coworkers so that they can have a better understanding as well. As a business owner, ensuring recycling is simple in your establishment is really the best thing you can do, and to achieve this, consistency is key. Use the same recycling and waste containers throughout your building with restrictive openings and clear color coordination to offer as many visual cues as possible to your customers and staff. Restrictive openings and color-coded streams have actually been proven to increase recycling participation and it reduces the amount of contamination found within the bins. Additionally, use clear labeling and signage options that leave the guesswork out of it. Put a graphic representation on your container that shows what material belongs where. Consider putting a short list on the sign as well to target some of the more problematic and confusing items. Another thing you can do is you can ask your local municipality what kind of signage and label options they use in public spaces and use that same kind of format on your own bins. Repetition and consistency is a huge driver of long-term learning and information retention. Remember, a successful rollout of a new waste management system is only effective if your employees and visitors are both aware of and understand the new changes. Communicating your effort in a way that is understandable for a large audience can sometimes be challenging. You need to educate staff and visitors on the new disposal procedures and coordinate custodial staff to ensure proper collection. If you're a business owner, you know that one of the biggest challenges to overcome can be to implement a a successful recycling and waste strategy are the associated costs. Having to outfit an entire building with new, consistent, and effective recycling containers can sometimes really add up. Luckily, there are recycling and waste container manufacturers who develop products with longevity and durability in mind. And the investment you make today will be working for you for years to come. Something else to consider, um, if your business is starting to recycle for the first time, there is a cost of adding additional collection services to your waste management plan. If before, let's say you were paying $80 a pickup for a six cubic yard container of waste, now you may be paying that same amount plus an additional $30 for a container of recycling. The good news here is that as your program improves and the amount of waste you generate starts to decrease, you will start to see cost savings. In that previous scenario, you could be getting potentially three recycling pickups for the, the same price as one waste pickup. So how can we either mitigate or minimize the financial impact of recycling as a business owner? There are lots of opportunities to offset the cost of a recycling program, and most of them begin with opening up a line of communication with your recycling and waste collection service. Find out exactly how you're being charged for collection. Is it a flat monthly fee regardless of the amount collected? Are you being charged for pickup, or do you have a cost per ton agreement? If you're being charged for pickup, there's a good chance you could save 50% or more by introducing a recycling program, 
And as you divert more and more materials from their waste stream, you're actually reducing the servicing frequency of your waste. If you're charged per ton, every pound removed from the waste stream is actually money saved. In my city, waste collection is offered every other, two, every other week with a two-bag pickup and any additional bags cost money, while recycling and organics are collected every single week free of charge. This means that some families actually see cost savings by increasing their recycling and organic use while minimizing waste generation. The same concept goes for businesses as well. Generally speaking, waste collection for business is more expensive than recycling. If you can reduce the number of pickups per month of waste by limiting the amount of materials that get incorrectly sorted, you too can achieve a cost savings. So keep an eye out for potential grants and funds made available by your state or your province's environmental agency. This will help you to offset the cost of a new recycling program. Landfills are expensive and policymakers really can help you make the necessary changes to ensure that um, these landfills have a longer lifespan in order to reduce costs associated with having to create a new one. If full funding is not available, some places like California have options for matching grants. This is where a business is responsible for matching a certain percentage of the funds that they provide. In today's day and age, people are beginning to open their eyes to environmental issues. You are seeing more and more successful businesses popping up with sustainability built right into their core values. Conversely, you're seeing a lot more negative attention being directed at companies that really fail to implement change to reduce the recycling impact. Implementing, marketing, and promoting a successful recycling system is one of the more cheaper, impactful ways uh, you can make a change as a company to align yourself with the sustainable choices that can consumers are making today. There is tremendous value associated with branding yourself as an eco-conscious company that draws attention from consumers who make purchases or align themselves with sustainable organizations. It's a big accomplishment, so celebrate it. Make posters, contact news agencies, magazines, internet bloggers, and recycling news sites. There are a lot of options and avenues to get the recognition you deserve for promoting sustainability and recycling correctly. So far in this discussion, we've talked about two huge challenges when it comes to recycling, the lack of standardization, causing confusion at the bin, and the associated financial costs with collection putting businesses in a tight economic situation. This last topic of discussion is equally, if not more so important than the previous, and surprisingly, it's just as widespread. How do you approach the issue of a lack of participation and general awareness when it comes to recycling? It doesn't matter how great of a waste management system you have. How fantastic your bins and labeling are, how many streams you offer, or how much you promote it. If the general public, your family, friends, staff members just don't care or just don't see the value in recycling, it's just never going to have success. While human behavior and bad habits are uh, difficult to change or break, there are some methods that have been shown to be more effective than others. According to a study that was performed by the University of British Columbia, they looked at the effect of two very different types of messaging in terms of recycling. The study analyzed recycling rates where two sample groups were exposed to several signage and marketing materials. Um, the first set of materials consisted of information that highlighted the more negative consequences if you didn't recycle, while the other set of materials highlighted the positive effects if you did recycle. The purpose of this study was to determine what was more effective at motivating residents to recycle, telling them that by not recycling they were causing harm, or telling them that by recycling they were reducing environmental impacts. The negative spin actually was more effective on improving recycling rates. From this study, we can gather that it would be more effective to utilize posters or leaflets that highlight the negative effects if you do not recycle properly, properly within your house, business, or institution in order to create change. When it comes down to it, recycling isn't the be-all, end-all of our environmental problems. It's not even the end to our waste management problems, but it's a fantastic place to start and it is proven to reduce, the envi to reduce environmental impact. Recycling is referred to as above-ground mining by some professionals in the, in the industry because that's exactly what it is. It's mining through tremendous amounts of material to find and extract valuables in order to process them and manufacture new products. The difference between above-ground mining and traditional mining is that we're not using any new or virgin resources. We're reusing what's already been made. The number one most effective way to overcome many recycling challenges is to simply reduce the amount of waste generated in the first place. Waste reduction is the most important piece of the puzzle to achieving a zero waste society, and it's why it's rightfully at the top of the waste reduction hierarchy as the most preferred option with disposal at the bottom. 
So what can you do in order to reduce your waste? In a world where everything is packaged, wrapped, and protected, what changes can we make in our everyday lives? There are so many options that it's really difficult to understand where you could start. This is why you should really take a look inside your own recycling and waste containers and try to figure out where it's all coming from. Are you purchasing products from the grocer or department store that have excessive packaging? Are there alternatives that might not be as visually appealing but that don't get thrown out? Do you use plastic disposable grocery bags to carry your produce in instead of reusable ones? Or do you maybe receive paper copies of all receipts, bills, and statements? If you're a business owner, consider performing a waste audit to determine exactly where all your recycling and waste is coming from. Determine what departments are generating the most waste and implement a minimization strategy. Sometimes it helps to work in conjunction with your purchasing department to understand where all the different types of materials are coming from and to determine a more effective option for some of the more harmful non-recyclable items. Does your home, office, or business have access to organic waste disposal? We've performed many waste audits here at Bush Systems, and in most cases, it's actually the organic waste that's a real culprit behind bad recycling rates. Organic waste is heavy, it contaminates practically everything in a recycling bin if it gets incorrectly sorted, and it's very bad for the environment when landfilled. When organic material breaks down in an anaerobic environment or an environment without oxygen, like in a landfill, it releases methane, which is a greenhouse gas about 22 times more potent than carbon dioxide. If you have an option for organic waste disposal, take it. Lastly, and most importantly, what about your family or staff members? Just because you're an all-star recycler and waste reducer doesn't mean that they are. So inform them of best practices and procedures for recycling in your home or office and encourage participation through both informing them of the negative repercussions of failing to recycle and giving positive reinforcement when you see improvements. You can also contact your local municipality and determine what items are recyclable in your home and office and produce materials to encourage people to make the right choices. Remember, consistency in messaging and containers is very important. If there's confusion at the bin, chances are the material will not be sorted properly. So while the pressures of implementing a successful recycling program can be daunting and overwhelming at first, there are plenty of free resources to use online that helps tailor fit an amazing system to your needs. Bush Systems actually created one such tool called the Resource Center. The Resource Center at its core is a recycling and waste collection analytics software. So this allows you to track and manage your waste generation within your building. With the Resource Center, you can easily determine where in your building is generating the most waste, allowing you to use the Resource Center's custom signage and materials to target problem areas within your building. What's really unique about the Resource Center uh, tracking analytics is that it allows you to divide your building into separate divisions, enabling you to track different areas separately. Not only this, but it also tracks at the container level, so you can see exactly what containers are being over and underutilized, which one needs more frequent servicing, and where your signage and education materials will have the most impact. So we can come up with an example here if we were to assume that there was a cafeteria in an office building. This could be set up as its own division or room. And then from there, we can also, uh, if let's say there's three separate containers, we can track at the per container level so we can see which container um, within the cafeteria, maybe it's the one that's by the exit, is generating the most uh, organic and recycling material. And we can uh, target our efforts that way. The Resource Center is a free web-based software that allows businesses and individuals access to an amazing suite of tools such as posters, pamphlets, email templates, marketing material, and educational blogs, vlogs, and articles. If creating an entire waste management program from the ground up seems like an insurmountable task, you can follow the Resource Center's industry-specific how-to guides that break down step-by-step -step exactly how to implement the most effective system for your building from idea conceptualization all the way to a finished and efficient program. The Resource Center also has tools that allow you to track greenhouse gas emissions at the office to find the nearest landfill, recycling center, and hazardous waste drop-off sites. There's even a tool to assist you in determining how many recycling and waste containers you might need for your building. So the roadmap truly is a road, uh, sorry, the Resource Center truly is a roadmap to recycling success. And in this way, it offers you four kind of key categories in the roadmap to recycling success to help you implement the successful waste management system. The first stop on the roadmap would kind of be the foundational knowledge. So if you're on the fence, if you should implement a, a recycling or an organics program, or if you just don't see the value both economically, social, or environmentally, you can really use the Resource Center's blogs, vlogs, articles 
to kind of get the foundational knowledge or the basis of information in order to kind of make an informed decision about if you should begin to be collecting these different streams. Secondly, we, we give you tools to have a successful implementation of a, of a recycling system once you've made your decision. So using our how-to guides, or again, using our articles, we can kind of give you the information as to what you need to do, things you need to think about, and steps you need to take in order to implement a successful system within your building, office, or home. Thirdly, the Resource Center at its core really is a program tracking analytics software. So not only do we give you all these valuable tools to kind of make your decision and make implementation more successful, we also give you a software to help you track your success along the way. So by, by being able to divide your building up into divisions and tracking at the container level, we can actually begin to target educational materials or target signage to hit the problematic areas within, within the building and to be able to make improvements and see improvements over time. Speaking of improvements, that's kind of the last area on the roadmap to recycling success. So the, res the Resource Center offers something called Insights, which is basically um, a tool that the Resource Center uses to analyze the data that you've inputted in order to give you um, helpful suggestions, hints, tips, and tricks in order to help improve your diversion rates and reduce your impact on the environment. So it really doesn't matter if you're a recycling newbie or a sustainability and waste management expert. The Resource Center has something for you no matter what stage you are in your waste management journey, and it can help you along the way to reach your goals, whether it's achieving a higher diversion rate or becoming a zero waste building. An interesting point to be made about the challenges associated with recycling is that many of the same pain points are not felt globally, country to country. There are many European countries, such as Sweden and the Netherlands, that have experienced better recycling rates and diversion rates than North America for more than 40 years. Sweden has had national legislation and policy framework dedicated to the continual improvement of recycling and resource recovery for decades, while it seems North America has fallen quite behind. The point of the matter is that there are solutions out there. There are countries and businesses who are at the forefront of the industry, making big strides to improve diversion rates and minimize waste generation in the first place. Companies who are reducing packaging, using more environmentally friendly materials, and ensuring the products they create are recyclable. Entire countries who put environmental sustainability and resource recovery at the front of their agenda. Countries who boast 90 plus percent diversion rate from landfill and who also hold large businesses who fail to reduce waste financially accountable for their actions. So today we've explored uh, some of the many challenges associated with recycling and we hope that we gave you something to think about. Uh, we would love to have further conversation with anyone who wishes to discuss any of the points further that were made today. Up on the screen um, is our contact information. Um, you can feel free to reach out to us with any questions or comments, and um, we would love to, to help you in any way that we can. So thanks again for participating today, and enjoy the rest of your day.